So in the last video, we created this um, house here uh, using white box. What I'd like to do in this video is show you how to create a um, simple character, and then we'll import it into O3DE. So here we are in Blender. You can download this at blender.org. Um, it's a free 3D software. Um, I'm going to assume that you don't have, you've never used it before or anything like that. Some of the things I do, I might brush over. So you might have to go on your own and sort of research it if I miss a step or send me a message or post something and I'll do my best to update it. So right off the bat, you're looking at the default view. So if you went to file and then new general, this is what you're looking at. Um, in order to rotate, you can click the middle wheel on your mouse to rotate around. Um, what I like to do is go to edit and then preferences here. And under key mapping, I turn on tab for pie menu. And that's by checking that on. And what that happens is when you hit that, you can see it brings up this pie menu of these different settings. Okay, so a couple of things is off on this tools menu. And if you can't see that, you can press T like Tom or Tiffany. And you can, they have all these different tools. So you can rotate around. You can zoom in by scrolling the wheel in and out. And if you hold Alt key on your keyboard and middle mouse click, or actually I'm thinking, I'm thinking of um, Maya. If you hold shift and middle mouse click, you can pan around. So scrolling the wheel in and out lets you zoom, middle mouse click and shift lets you pan. All right, I don't need this camera, so I'm gonna select that and press delete, and I don't need this light. What I'm gonna do is select this cube, and I'm going to select my move tool here, and I'm just gonna move it up. Now an alternate way of moving it up and down is pressing G, and that'll let you move it around. And if you'd like to lock it on a specific axis, for instance, Z, you can move up and down. Now you might be wondering, well, how do I view this uh, as you're moving? Well, you can see there's this um, axis controller here. You can actually left click in here and use it to rotate. But here's Z, Y, and X. And generally your Y axis here, you want that to be sort of your forward facing. Um, let's go ahead and press control and the one key. And what that's gonna do is that's going to add a modifier. So let's hit control and two to smooth that out. And it just adds a smoothing modifier. Now you might be wondering, well, if you're coming from Maya or Max, well, where are these modifiers being stacked? If you go over to this wrench here, it's our modifier panel. And that's what this is. This is our um, subdivision modifier. And by hitting control one, it made it level one and control two, it made it level two. I'm actually gonna right click on this and I'm going to do shade smooth. Now this is going to be the body of our character. And what I'd like to do is add some legs. So what I'm gonna do is hit Control and D, or I'm sorry, Shift and D rather, and that makes a duplicate of this. And I'm just gonna press Escape to snap it into place. And I'm just gonna move it down here and then off to the right. So something like this. And actually, let's just move it to the right of the character with the um, Y axis facing this way. Now, what I can also do is I can model across this, um, this is essentially gonna be the head of a gumball character and this is gonna be his leg. So over here in the modifier panel, I'm just gonna click on this and I'm gonna add a mirror modifier. And you'll see this little mirror object, grab that eyedropper and click on that. And now you can see that it made a duplicate. And so as I move this around, it mirrors this object across. All right, so this is going to be a foot and then what we're gonna do is extrude our leg. So I'm gonna press S uh, like Sarah or Sam or stop sign. And I'm gonna shrink that down and again, clicking in my middle wheel to pan, I'm gonna move this down somewhere like this in the grid and then move it underneath them. Now, um, in our front view, if you're interested in, well, how do I get to my front view? If you press the, um, the period on your numpad, if you have a full-size keyboard, it'll zoom. If you press one, it'll zoom directly into your front view. And I, I know I'm in my front view because it'll say front orthographic. You can hit four for perspective, five for user orthographic, and so these are the different ones that the user can set up, but really one, two, three is the right side and so on. So let's go to one here and like make sure that this is directly in our character. Now, if you wanna see the wireframe on top of this, you can click on the drop down arrows here to get more features, right? Like here's the wireframe, you can see now it applied it. And this is essentially how it looks. And actually our Y, our, I'm sorry, our Y axis should be facing this way for our front view. All right, let's take a look at how we can edit this. So we want to make these look more like feet. So I'm going to hit the tab key and I'm going to go to edit mode. 
And up at the top here, you can see there's vertex, edge, and face. I'm gonna select this front face, and then I'm gonna hit G, and this allows you to move it around. And what you can see is if you press X, it can move it uh, left and right. Y will lock it on that Y axis to move it forward. And what would be nice is if we can add a cut here so that we can extrude out a leg from back here. So if you hit shift, if you hit here, look, sorry. If you hit control and R and you hover over the edge, you can see it adds this yellow line. If I left click, I can move this and I'm not holding anything down, but just moving my mouse left and right, I can actually move this around. So go ahead and move that somewhere like this. And it still might be a little bit too big for the feet. So I'm gonna hit tab, I'm gonna go back to object mode, hit S and scale that down a bunch more. So something like this, I'm gonna move it in a little more and then I'm gonna scale it down a bunch. Now it would be nice is if we can flatten these feet. So let's hit tab and go back to edit mode. Then I'm gonna hit control R and I'm gonna click on the left, uh, this line here, I'm gonna bring it down and you'll see it flatten that foot out. So there we go. Now, we'd like to select this face and just extrude it up into the body so that we can create the, um, the rest of the legs that are going into this gumball head. So I'm gonna hit uh, tab here and make sure that I'm in edit mode. And then I'm gonna press the three key to go to face mode. And what you'll notice is here's vertex mode, edge and face. Now vertex mode allows us to select these little dots. So whenever two edges meet or intersect, they'll make a vertice. A edge is essentially this edge right here. So if I press G, you can see I can move that edge around. Let's go back to vertex just to see how that looks. There we go. And then if I want to move a face, I can press three and that lets me select the face. And you probably guessed the way we know that face is selected is it's shaded. All right, so let's extrude this up. So I'm going to hit E and I'm going to just bring it straight up into the body. So something like that. Then what I'd like to do is I, w I don't want it to sort of uh, pan off like that. So I'm going to hit control and R again. Oops, let me hit escape. We want to make sure we're in edge mode, by the way, when we uh, let's extrude that up again. And then I'm going to click off and I'm going to press two, like the number two, to go to edge mode. I'm going to hit control and R, click here, and then just move that up so that it gives my leg a little bit more shape. And then what I'd like to do is hit control R and click once in the middle, and then click again. And because it's already selected, and say you clicked off and it wasn't, I'm gonna hold Alt and left click on that edge and it'll loop it. And then you can select your move tool and move that forward and back. Now, a trick is if you wanna save time, say you, say you like to, you don't have a very big screen and you need to hide the screen real estate, so you press T and you hide that, you can hold Shift and hit Spacebar and it'll bring up that same menu. And I can go ahead and select Move, then hold Alt and left click and I can move it. And I'm just gonna move it forward and give him a little bit of a bend in his knees. Something like that. Now the body's a little bit too small, so I'm gonna hit tab and go to object mode and select the body again and hit S, like uh, stop sign and scale that up a bit more. And what I'd like to do is maybe move these, well, let's move that body forward a little bit. So it's sitting right above those legs. Now the last thing we need to do, and I'll probably end this video here, is we wanna kind of combine this, but in order to combine this effectively, what we need to do is make sure that all of these modifiers are applied. And right now, this modifier is just in preview mode. So it's actually still a square. So in order to retain this shape, you either hit Control A, or you can click here and then hit Apply. And now you can see that it added that geometry. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm going to apply the subdivision, and then I'm going to apply the mirroring. And I'll actually do it with Control A, just to save time. So there it is. Now, the next thing we can do is highlight both and then hit Shift and J. And actually, uh, is it Shift and J? Or could, yeah, it's Control J, sorry. And you can see, let me undo that. These two here will become one object like that. And then I'm just gonna rename this Gumball. Now, because I want everything to be related somewhat to O3D, I'm gonna hit, uh, Let's go to our front view. So let's go ahead and hit the um, one key on my numeric keyboard. I'm gonna move this up. And there's a little bit of housekeeping we need to do before we bring it in. And again, we're going to texture this and unwrap it and stuff. So this is more of like a, how do you bring it into O3D type thing. But um, what I'd like to do is, let's see. Notice it has this location and a little bit of issues with its scaling. We need to clean this out so that we can tell O3D that this is 100%. We also want to move our axis so it's by the bottom of the feet of our character. 
So let's hit Control and A here, and we're gonna do all transforms to Delta. And you can see that cleared out our location. And it said that this is the scale, this is 111. Then what you can do is under Tool here, where it says Transform Origins, you can see it's showing you those origins and you can kind of move it down to the floor here. And then you can uncheck it and what you'll notice is that origin is now on the floor. See that? All right, and then just go back and double check. And it looks like there's a little bit of movement that happened there. So I'm gonna hit Control A again and all transforms to Delta. And let's save this. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this as well. Save it to wherever you want your computer. Now let's jump back into O3D. Now back inside of here in our asset browser, I wanna create a folder. So we're gonna go um, see where it says O3D projects, new project. Under assets here, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna do open in Explorer. I'm going to right click and I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call this um, PC for playable character. And then inside of PC, oops, not physics, but PC, I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call this gumball. All right, now, mind you, this folder, if we look in here, it's starting to add that. But what I'd like to do is, um, this is just kind of my other way of doing it, is I'm going to right click here and I'm going to send to desktop. So send to desktop, create shortcut. And then back in Blender here, I'm going to do file, export. I'm going to export as an FBX. And I'm going to just navigate to my desktop. And I'm going to, let's see, where is that gumball folder? Here is gumball shortcut. And then inside of here, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I do apply transform. So you can see apply units, apply transform here. And I want to do, um, I don't think I had it selected. So I'm just going to do all objects. I'm going to hit export FBX. Looks like we got a couple errors here. Let's try that again. So file, export, FBX. And we'll do selected objects. Oh, you know what? I didn't name it. That's probably my problem. So I'm going to do gumball here. And then export FBX. There we go. That's our issue. And then back in O3D here, I'm gonna. You'll notice that now there is a gumball model in here, and I can drag it into my scene, or I can drag it in here. And I know that my building is at around the 111 area, the entity rather. So I'm gonna just hit R like I did before. And what you'll notice is, notice it snapped to where we placed our transform before, and it looks like maybe we should have. But let's just go ahead and rotate this. Let's see. Uh, here actually. There we go, 180 degrees. And I should scale it down a little bit more in my FBX, but for now, I'm gonna leave that as 100%. Let's go ahead and grab our entity here and rename it house. And then what I'm gonna do with this is, let's just press three and really scale this up a little bit like that. So now we have our gumball character and um, well, we can go a lot bigger than this, I guess, because our door is really tiny. We have our gumball character and our house. So what we'll do in the next video is we'll take a look at how we can uh, essentially texture gumball. Maybe we'll make a better door than that. Um, we'll do rigging and animation and all that good stuff.